What's happening guys? This is the Grandmaster of Faster and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Stadium for the Nintendo 64. In the last episode, we emerged victorious in the Ultra Ball Tournament of the Prime Cup, but as you can see, we are missing a trophy. And we are going to rectify that problem in the next couple of videos, because today we're going to take on the Master Ball Tournament. Now, after much consideration, I decided to use uh, the team that I used for the Ultra Ball Tournament. It's very well balanced, it served me well, and uh, I think it'll come through for me in the Master Ball Tournament because of how tough the competitor's Pokémon are. Starting things off, we have Q-Ball, and I believe many of his Pokémon are weak against rock and ground, so obviously Rhydon would be a good choice. But just in case, I'm going to bring in Tauros and Starmie for backup. We're finally underway with Pokemon Tournament Prime Cup Master Ball. Which trainer will go home with the Champion's Trophy this time? Well, hopefully that'll be me. And things are off to a good start because he's leading off with his Beedrill. Beedrill is at level 100, bug poison type with the moves Focus Energy, Twin Needle, Pin Missile, and Hyper Beam. Um, it doesn't really have much that can affect a rock Pokemon, and it's definitely one of his weaker Pokemon in general. The only dangerous thing it has is Hyper Beam, and even then, it doesn't really have the stats to use it effectively. It's a Beedrill. What else were you expecting? It didn't really get good until it received a Mega Evolution in Gen uh, 6. And his next Pokemon is going to be Raticate. Raticate is at level 100, normal type, with the moves Super Fang, Hyper Fang, Quick Attack, and Dig. The most interesting thing about Raticate is the fact that it has Super Fang, which always cuts your HP in half, regardless of what total it is at. But aside from that, yeah, it's not particularly uh, dangerous. It's going to go for the Hyper Fang. That's not going to do much. So I think a Body Slam should finish it off. I apologize for not having recorded a video lately. I've been sick for the past couple of days. Um, I caught a bug that was going around. At least that's what I think it was. But yeah, I was in bed for two days, and it sucked. I'm not gonna lie. I hate being sick. Alright, last up is going to be Pinsir, level 100. Bug type with the moves Strength. Seismic Toss, Swords Dance, and Bind, and I hope this Rock Slide will KO it. Come on, come through for me, Rhydon. Oh, not quite. Unfortunately, that means I'm going to get KO'd, unless I switch out. So switch out, I shall. Here's a Pokemon I decided to switch out for Tauros, because I know Tauros is faster than Pinsir. And he's gonna go for Bind! Well, that's just perfect. So now I'm trapped for anywhere from two to five turns. That's always lovely. And yeah, as I've said repeatedly, Bind and Wrap were super broken in Generation 1, because you can't do anything. Thankfully, that was changed from Generation 2 onward. Granted, it's not doing very much damage, but it's just stalling the battle. He's only delaying the inevitable, let's be honest. Okay, that's three attacks he's managed to get off of. Of course, he's probably going to get all five turns to inflict to some damage on me. And this would be attack number four, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. Guess I haven't quite gotten over my sickness yet. Ah, there we go. 
That's what I call a body slam. And down it goes. Is it down and out? I hope this annoying string of attacks isn't an omen of things to come, but uh, we'll see. But for now, that's our first battle taken care of, and we at least gotta continue. So who's up next? Why, it's our old friend, the Team Rocket member! And he's got quite the lineup there, I must say. Hmm, I wonder who I should pick. Um, I think I'm gonna lead off with Starmie. And let's go ahead and bring out Exeggutor as well. As for my last Pokemon, I'm gonna bring in Jolteon and hope that he doesn't send out Golem. What kind of battle can we expect to see? Because this lineup could prove to be a little tricky. Alright, he's gonna lead off with his Golbat. Level 100, Poison Flying type with the moves. Bite, Confuse Ray, Toxic, and Mega Drain. I know it's... Oh, wait, no, I'm faster. I thought for a minute that Golbat would be quicker than me, but no. And Blizzard should take it out. Oh, it doesn't quite. And it decided to go for the Bite. I really don't know why. It could have just attacked me with Mega Drain. And, uh, yeah, let's hit it with Thunderbolt. That should finish it off. Alright, so the first Pokemon is down and out. If you ever look at Golbat's uh, red and blue sprite, it looks really crazy because its mouth is stretched out as high as it is tall and its tongue is drooling. Yeah, the Generation 1 Pokemon sprites definitely look weird to say the least. Uh, but for now, we've got Persian to deal with. Persian is at level 100. Normal type with the moves Payday, Slash, Screech, and Hyper Beam. This thing can be a little bit dangerous because it does have both Slash and Hyper Beam, which can deal some heavy damage to you. Payday is largely irrelevant. It doesn't do much damage. And uh, in the Game Boy games, when you uh, use Payday... After the battle, if you win, you get to pick up a little extra cash. But in Pokemon Stadium, it doesn't do anything. Alright, two Pokemon down and one to go. Who is coming out next, Mr. Team Rocket Agent? Ah, it's going to be Golem. Golem is at level 100. It is a rock and ground type with the moves Earthquake, Rock Slide, Mega Kick, and Bide. As you know, Golem is extremely defensive, but it's not that great in the special department. A water, grass, or ice attack will take it out, as you can plainly see. And that is battle number two. So that battle went a little bit more smoothly than the first one did. Yeah, these trainers start to use really cheap tactics uh, when the Master Ball tournament comes around. But let's go ahead and continue with uh, battle number three. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess I haven't quite gotten over my cough yet. All right, Judo Boy, who is known for his fighting types, has a little bit more type diversity here. But even so, I'm going to uh, lead off with Alakazam. Uh, let's bring out Exeggutor as well. And, uh, just in case, I'll send in Starmie as backup. Rhydon's and, Rhydon and Tauros are no good for obvious reasons, and Jolteon won't fare too well against, uh, Nidoking. So this team is probably gonna be my best bet. Alright, his first Pokémon is going to be Jolteon. Jolteon is at level 100. Electric type with the moves Focus Energy, Thunderbolt, Takedown, and Double Kick. Um, I'm actually going to paralyze it by using Thunder Wave. And somehow I'm faster than it. That, uh, I wasn't expecting that to happen. And thankfully it decided to go for the Focus Energy. I was worried that it was going to use Takedown. Um, hmm... I don't know if a Psychic is going to take it out. 
but I think I'm going to go for it anyway. If it hits me with takedown, I'm probably going to be at a disadvantage because Alakazam... Oh, I won't have to worry about that at all. Oh, maybe I will. Okay. It's going to go for the Thunderbolt, and that's another critical hit. Jeez, that did a lot of damage. All right, uh, time to finish it off with a seismic toss, I think. I probably should have used recover, but um, yeah, what can you do? Oh, is it down and out? All right, who is what coming is out next, next Mr. Judo me. Boy? He is going to go for Primate. Oh, Primate is it at level 100, fighting round. type. With the moves Focus Energy, Submission, Thrash, and Rock Slide, I'm going to go ahead and use Recover as a little insurance policy. And uh, it's going to go for the Focus Energy as well. In fact, all of his Pokemon have Focus Energy. So they will uh, all get increased critical hit ratios. And more often than not, that's the first attack he's going to use. But thankfully, I won't have to worry about that because... Times two weakness plus a critical hit. Yeah, that Primeape didn't have a chance. One interesting fact is that Primeape is the fastest Pokemon. fighting Pokemon in the game, and it's also one of the most underrated Pokemon in the game, I think. All right, last up is going to be Hitmonlee. Hitmonlee is at level 100. Fighting type with the moves Focus Energy, High Jump Kick, Mega Kick, and Swift. Watch out for High Jump Kick. That's gonna hurt. But one uh, side note is that if High Jump Kick does miss, it causes recoil damage. But I won't have to worry about that. That is battle number three taken care of. All right. So now comes the halfway point. Let's see who's on tap for battle. It is Gambler. And true to his nature, he has a diverse uh, lineup. That Dragonite worries me. Hmm, who am I going to use? Well, I should probably send out Jolteon to deal with his two water types. And it might be able to handle his uh, Dragonite if it comes out. As for his other Pokemon... I'm going to bring out Exeggutor and let's send in Starmie, just in case that Doug Trio shows up. The crowd excitement is building. So, uh, the Gambler once again relies on his tactic of hitting you with one-hit KO moves. Starting things off, he has Slowbro. Slowbro is at level 100, Water Psychic type, with the moves Thunder Wave, Fissure, and Bubble Beam. Best strategy, just take his Pokemon out before you get unlucky. Remember, it's only a 30% chance that Fissure and Horn Drill will make contact. But of course, if they do make contact, you get instantly, you are KO'd instantly. All right, now, next up is Arbok. Arbok is at level 100, poison type, with the moves Fissure, Glare, Bite, and Mega Drain. The worst thing that could happen, aside from getting one hit KO'd, of course, is if it uses Glare like it's done right now. And unfortunately, Glare does have a high accuracy. Well, I'm paralyzed. That sucks. And, of course, it's going to go for the Fissure. And it KO'd me! I didn't think you'd be able to pull it off, so you deserve a round of applause for that, my friend. That's a very good question, actually. Uh, I'll go for Exeggutor. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go for the type advantage. The downside is that I am going to be slower. So uh, I'm going to hope and pray that I can hit it with the Psychic. And it's going to go for the Fissure again. Please don't hit me. Thank you very much. You see, Psychic, unlike Fissure, has 100% accuracy. All right. Um, so that's two Pokemon down and one of mine gone. 
What is his last Pokemon going to be? He is going to go for Doug Trio. Doug Trio is at level 100. Ground type with the moves Fissure, Body Slam, and Rock Slide. Um, Doug Trio is really, really fast. And of how did it? Uh, it's not logical. It really isn't logical. Could he actually manage to KO all of my Pokemon by using Fissure? Because if that manages to happen, I will be stunned. Doug Trio is known as the ultimate revenge killer because it's super, super quick. So I have to hope and pray that Blizzard will take it out. Now, Doug Trio doesn't have the greatest special in the world, so I should be okay. And indeed, it does not survive. But the fact that two of my Pokemon got KO with Fissure, that's impressive. I'm not gonna lie. So well done, Mr. Gambler. You have earned my respect. Your gambling actually paid off somewhat. All right, that is four opponents down in the Master Ball. So next time on Let's Play Pokemon Stadium, we are going to battle the last four trainers. See you guys next time.